Thank you once again for joining us for the morning show here at the Billabong Pro J Bay. It is Wednesday, July 20th, day seven of the waiting period. Ronnie Blakey and Joe Turpel here this morning. Joe, how are you feeling, mate? I know you had a big night last night. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes last night, Ronnie. They had a pretty cool band playing under the monster tent, and everyone kind of came out of the woodwork to watch it, but, you know, snuck out of there at a nice and early time because... Uh, I was curious to see what was going to happen this morning. Yeah, well, uh, you know what? I had the feeling that it was going to be pretty small. Each morning we've woken up, you can kind of hear the ocean, especially as a, the waves move down the point. And uh, this morning I couldn't hear a hell of a lot. We're going to throw to Adam Rapogel and find out what the conditions are doing right now. Thanks, Ronnie. Thanks, Joe. Well, just when you didn't think it could get any smaller, it did. And Luke, that is probably the smallest JB I've seen in a really, really, really long time. But the good thing is it can only get better from here. How's that forecast looking? Yeah, it can only get bigger from here. It's uh, still looking good. Let's hope Friday we've got enough surf to get a start because uh, Saturday's looking probably the best day and then Sunday the winds could get a little iffy. So it's changing around a little bit every day, but we're still hoping for that weekend start. But who knows? We still check in tomorrow at 7 a.m. You know, personally, I'd rather see a little onshore than that devil wind, Luke, because it can still really shred out there even when it's really onshore. So hopefully we just get some surf. Ronnie, Joe, back to you guys. Thank you, Adam. And, uh, yeah, I actually met Eric Stedman this morning. And, you know, I, I want to compliment him because I think that every time a set wave's rolled in that's offered a scoring opportunity, Eric Stedman's had the guys out in the water. Which is uh, pretty hard to do when you see the swell fluctuating throughout the week. He's even mentioning a possible pulse tomorrow because he'd love to get that second round out of the way and really try to get the bulk of the the event done when the, the swell's peaking. But if there is some really good clean waves like we saw through the beginning of the second round, we might be able to finish that back half even as early as tomorrow. Most definitely. Well, uh, assisting Eric and the contest uh, the contest director, sorry, and the head judge in making the call each morning is Surfline, the official forecasters of the event. And we're going to check out their latest forecast right now. Let's go to it. This is the satellite loop of the South Atlantic and Southwest Indian Ocean. The main focus is that strong storm developing in the South Atlantic that will produce that possible south southwest swell for Saturday. I like this one, the developing storm. You can see that big purple blob moving just under the continent there. And uh, J-Bay just sits on the end of that landmass and uh, you know indicating a pretty strong swell um, the small e swell that we're seeing is indicated in the red there that's the seven day forecast and as I said really showing strong signs for a southwest swell at the end of the waiting period this is the near shore swell model showing surf heights at J Bay over the next few days and it is looking promising you can see the red there that's indicating a nice little swell moving towards J Bay fingers crossed that thing eventuates Oh, the red and purple are our favorite colors when we look at swell maps, and it's Surfline setting us that forecast for quite some time now. And it's like we're almost there. Each and every morning we're looking at it, just hoping that it sticks around and it doesn't change, and looks like we can probably be counting on it for the last couple of days. Most definitely. Well, stick with us. You're watching the Billabong Pro J-Bay Morning Show. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. You're watching the Billabong Pro J Bay. This is the morning show. Ronnie Blakey and Joe Turpel here with you. Joe, uh, each day we've kind of been investigating uh, some of the, the hot topics around the place. Plenty of stories going on here at Jeffreys Bay. Obviously, the world title race starting to heat up a little bit, but there's also a battle happening down the back end of the ratings. Guys looking to solidify their spot in the top 32 uh, before this New York event. And one of the guys kind of dwindling down the back end is Julian Wilson kind of a guy that you wouldn't really expect would need to be 
battling for a spot. We've been waiting for this appearance in his rookie year on the ASP World Tour ever since we saw him doing sushi rolls as a wild card back at Snapper Rocks. And all of a sudden, you know, he had a kind of a rougher start than he had, would have planned. But, uh, Ronnie, you caught up with him and kind of talked it over with him. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I touched on the fact that, that both – Dane Reynolds and Geordie Smith both had, both had pretty tough years, their rookie years, and uh, I think Julian's kind of reassured by that. He feels like he can get back in the game and find some form on the World Tour. As RJ said, I did catch up with him the other day, and let's hear what he had to say. I didn't want to fall into that kind of rut that those guys did, you know, all the pressure of doing well and wanting to do well themselves. They kind of over surf and maybe that's what I'm doing but it's hard not to fall into that that's probably the only thing that's keeping me sane right now is knowing that those guys have done the same thing because it is so frustrating losing in the second round or third round but my year so far has been it's been not so good on the world tour but uh, I've kind of found my feet on the prime event so I've got some points to make that halfway cut off now which kind of frees me up a lot more for for these events because it uh, weighs down on you pretty heavily that halfway cut and, and not being guaranteed a full year on the world tour to, to get comfortable you've got to kind of come out of the gates all guns blazing and since the start of the year I've been pro surfing the best I have in my career so far so I've been getting really frustrated with my results because I know that I can do better and I guess it is kind of showing in those videos that I put up on the site and I'm staying busy but I feel like I'm coming into my stride a little bit now. I'm a little bit more confident in the heats and everything, but yeah, my, my surfing feels good and I've had some close heats and stuff, but I've made some silly mistakes and I don't think the surfing is what I really got to worry about. I just got to kind of get my head together. Hopefully I can kind of find a gear this second half of the year and, and make some heats and not be struggling to stay on, you know, make a bit of a stand. But my first time to Jeffreys Bay and the waves have been okay and I mean, fun for me because I have no expectations. I'm, it's my first time here and, and any waves that break out there, I'm having fun. So I'm ready for round three. I had a good start to the comp and things are going good. Julian making the comment that he, uh, he feels like he's surfing well and looking at that footage of him from the first round, I think he'll probably start to build some, uh, some strong results into these next three events. Well, and I think he's not giving, him, giving himself enough credit. You think about the heats that he's lost early even though on the ratings it's uh maybe he's fallen a little bit short he's ripping at snapper even in the second round of brazil he had one of the biggest tail blows on the back end at operador that i've seen and then into a shove it so i think he mentioned his surfing's there he's feeling well he's just hoping the results are going to start translating later on this year yeah well, he's in a bit of a uh, a sus position at the moment in in 30th spot coming into this contest but on the one world rankings he's moved all the way up to 16th so he should be there after the, uh, the chop after New York, but I think he's going to bag some big results. I think he'll move right up the World Tour rankings. And that's his, ultimately his goal. He wants to be running for a world title. But that's the great news, though, with the One World rankings, backing himself up. He got that big win in Portugal. He should be really set to go for, for the, the rotation. Most definitely. Well, Julian, he's on the app on the ratings. Kelly Slater is inevitably going to take a fall on the ratings because he, uh, he missed the adventure. Yeah, well, it was a little interesting to find out what we could possibly expect from Kelly because we didn't really know what he was going to do. We kept seeing those insane waves he was getting in Fiji, but he kind of wanted to get here, Ronnie. He was, I think he was planning on getting that second round performance in, but when it kind of snuck up, we had that little swell and the opportunity to run. There's no way he could make it. Yeah, well, the latest tweet from Kelly, uh, we've got it up on your screen there. You can see he says, OK, on a flight, bummer they held J-Bay yesterday. Would be arriving now for the second round, fired up for Tahiti, peace in or something. So uh, a kind of a little cryptic signing off on that, that tweet. But, but he was looking to get here, but, you know, he just left it too late, far too late. And there was that little pulse. We managed to get those second round heats done. We, we weren't trying to get the event underway to so that Kelly did miss the contest. Obviously, we'd love to have him here, but that's just the way it panned out. Exactly. When you have waves in this lineup, you have to take advantage of them. You have to make sure that you're getting the surfers a chance to go. They had a long deliberation, and everyone was in agreement. The one guy that was outvoted, Kieran Pro, actually, once the heats began, he was pretty excited. Those first six heats of the second round actually got some waves. Plenty of, uh, plenty of people having their say on Kelly missing the contest. Probably no one more vocal than yourself, Joe. You, you even made the huge call that Kelly should be stripped of a world title every time he misses a World Tour event. Are you going to stand by that on camera? Um, well, I, I think um, 
Ronnie, I think that might have been a rumor that was spread around and got my name plugged on it. But uh, no, yeah, I'm. I, I love watching Kelly surf this place. It's he's one of the best ever. I think we saw some highlights the other day. That big carving three that he did, one of the most amazing approaches. So if you're asking me if I miss him, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of missing Kelly right now. Way to back pedal, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we did catch up with the world's best surfers, and we asked them to uh, share their thoughts on Kelly missing the Billabong Pro J Bay for 2011. Let's hear what they had to say. I guess Kelly's at like a, a stage of his life where he just wants to chase really good waves. Um, you know, he's. I know he still loves competing and putting on a rush shirt, but. You know, when you've got 10 world titles, um, if you miss an event, it's not the end of the world, you know. If he wants to go and chase good waves and do that, then that's fine. Like, I don't see why he wouldn't want to, but don't say you're going to do the world tour and then just not show up for your heat. It didn't really annoy me. It's just, I think we've all heard it before. Well, he's at that stage where he's, he's more excited about probably getting good waves. He's done everything possible competitive-wise. Um, so he chose, to, you know, to surf pumping waves in Fiji. If I knew that Tabaru was 10 foot or bigger and just pumping, it'd be pretty hard to drag me away from there too. But um, I think it's a little bit rude <laughs> that he didn't show up. Oh, I really don't care, he knows what he's doing, you know. If he come over, cool. If he don't come over, I don't care. <laughs> and nobody cares. <laughs> Only Billabong. It's more of a disrespectful thing to do to the guys that are chasing the world title this year. Mick and Geordie and Joel and those guys that are really focused on it. I think they want to uh, win at every event and they want the best guys to be there and they want to beat the best guys and come the end of the year and the guy wins and they'll be like, oh, Kelly didn't show up here and this and that. And yeah, I, I wanted them to be there actually quite bad. Um, I always love watching them surf out here, so. Uh, and yeah, you know, it's, it's always good to have everybody here, everyone that competes on the tour. You know, you don't want to win an event without the best guy there, so that sucks. But I know deep down he'd be, he'd be a bit spooked missing it. I know it for sure. He, he'd, he'd be kicking himself. Even though he got sick ways, I know that he'd feel like he's missing out. Because we all do, like, it's, it's all we've done our whole lives, you know, I'd be the same. But yeah, I, I know that he's had, a, had so much fun over there, but I reckon he'd like to be here too. It's, you know, it's his decision and, you know, he, I don't, he didn't upset me. I was upset that I didn't get the waves that he got, but, you know, I, I planned on coming here to do the event and, you know, that's what I'm here for. So, um, you know, he planned on going to get barred in Fiji and that's what he did. Well, generally speaking, people look a little bummed that Kelly's not going to be here, except uh, Jadson Andre. <laughs> he actually looked pretty happy about it. I think he did. I think he was kind of like, well, hey, you know, no big deal to me, and, and we'll see if Kelly's going to show up for the next one. But, gosh, what a great uh, piece there with Jadson. He looks like the happiest guy in the world. Oh, laughing like a <laughs> hyena. <laughs> Oh, how good is that kid? <laughs> He's amazing, and you hear that laugh constantly, not just right there, but you see him running around, checking the surf. He surfs into the dark, and he's doing that exact laugh every day, each and every day down here. Most definitely. Well, thanks for joining us again for the morning show here at the Billabong Pro J, uh, Pro J Bay. We're going to leave you now with some highlights from the second round.